Ready to find your next job? CareerOneStop.org has you covered with free online tools and data to help you plan your career, find a training program, or nail your job search. You'll find resources to help you make the best career decision and learn about in-demand careers, salaries, resumes, job postings, and more. The website has something for every stage of your career. Find your next job on CareerOneStop.org. Sponsored by the U.S. Department of Labor Employment Training Administration. Fact. Three billion of us worldwide depend on seafood as a key source of protein. And yet, overfishing is the number one threat to our ocean. Sorry, three billion people. How about switching your fish night to something sustainable? Try Good Catch Foods for 100% plant-based seafood that is truly off the hook. Saving the ocean feels good, and the taste, delicious. Go to goodcatchfoods.com to learn more, or shop online. All right, what's going on? Another live stream, huh? Sunday night. What's up, MC Cogus? What's going on? Crazy few days, huh, everybody? Everybody's on edge. Hey, what's up, Jen? I had somebody get mad at me today because I'm against censorship. And you know how I usually don't even respond to stuff like that? I had to actually respond because it's it's ludicrous. For somebody to convolute this issue and try and make it about Trump at this point is beyond me. People that are following this case especially. Chris, what's going on? Deirdre, what's going on? I hope you're having a good night. A little late out there in uh, Connecticut, Chris, huh? 10 p.m.? Yeah, it's past 10 p.m. is right around my bedtime these days. I'm getting old. Big Rob, what's up, bro? Oh, there you go, 2 p.m. Nice, nice afternoon. Jordan, what's going on? Iowa, my sister graduated from Iowa State, in fact. Good old Ames. Fantastic place. When she graduated, we went down there for the graduation and I had a blast. I was there for a few days and just an awesome environment. Wish I would have left to go to school somebody, somewhere else besides staying here in Nevada. So what's going on, everybody? How's, uh, how's everybody holding up after the last few days? Hopefully well. Stressful as hell. Yeah, there's no, there's no doubt. People act like wild animals, man. I think George R.R. R. Martin says it the best. If you put a sword in a man's hand, he'll turn into an animal. Paraphrasing, but it's basically the same thing we see with all of these crazies. Yeah. For sure, Jen, that's exactly what they want. I mean, uh, Hillary, that's exactly what they want. 100%. They want people at each other's throats so that they can pass more draconian laws like the Patriot Act. And that's what's coming. That's definitely what's coming. In in the wake of this, there's going to be more laws. And people like Alyssa Slotkin, who used to be in the CIA, is now a member of Congress, talking about how, oh, we're going to pivot to domestic terrorism. That's just, that's that's a dog whistle. For the same shit they do in other countries when they're fomenting insurrection and and nonsense. So I don't know how anyone could trust any of these people. These are the people we're talking about on a regular basis. Hi, Tarnia. So, you know, these are the people we talk about on a regular basis here. How could anyone have any any confidence in these people at any point? And I don't even – it has nothing to do with Trump, obviously. I could care less. Guy could care less if Trump is ever able to speak and use social media ever again. It's the precedent that it sets. At the very least, wait till the guy leaves office. Hey, Pop, what's going on? Jen, you guys are hot over there in Australia, huh? 2 p.m. and hot. It's cold here in Las Vegas. It's like, uh, well, cold for us anyway. It's 40s right now, low 50s. Pretty beautiful, but a little cold. I mean... I I love it. I prefer this kind of weather. The colder the better. But it gets um it gets a little warm here in Vegas, I'll tell you what. 115, 117 sometimes. Pass on that. Hell yeah, Mike, look, that's why I'm so 
up in arms about the whole censorship thing, my dude. I'm worried that we're going to be next, right? If they start using this language, this broad language about, oh, disinformation, peddling conspiracy theories, how quick will they try and put us into that box and this case will go to the wayside? And I think people are focusing on the short game as opposed to looking at the long game. And, you know, you have a bunch of people that profess to follow people like Whitney Webb or uh, Caitlin Johnson and others like that. And then it comes down to it and the rubber meets the road and people don't want to stand for their convictions and for the things that they believe are right because they're scared that there might be some backlash from... I don't know, their listeners or friends or whatever it may be. I think that in the last two years, you folks should have already figured out by now with me that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up for what I believe in. And if I think that this puts this case in jeopardy, I'm not just going to stand by and act like it's no big deal because it is a big deal. Right now, it's them, right? Right now, it's the, the, the crazies, right? The real crazies. But how long before people like Slotkin and the rest of these... CIA agents turned um, congressional leaders or bureaucrats or whatever have you, how long before it's the whole entire independent media gone? But you don't think people like, I'll bring her up again, people like Whitney aren't in the crosshairs of the establishment? She's no friend of theirs. No truth teller is. And that's the problem. They lump everybody together. And then we have this problem where people who are really telling the truth are having their voices silenced. That's why it's such a slippery slope. I, you know, personally, I believe that all of you out there can discern what is BS and what isn't BS. And I don't believe that these corporations and people like Jeff Bezos, who are inviting Elaine Maxwell to their retreat, should be the arbiters of truth. Is that where we are? All because some dumbass guy like Donald Trump has everybody all fired up? Come on. Really? That's what they want. They, they love this kind of shit. If you think that the powers that be aren't lapping this up, you're crazy. Because they're never going to cede this power back willingly. So that's where I'm at as far as the censorship. And I know there's some people that disagree, right? And there's a lot of people that their dislike for Donald Trump just basically guides their whole entire lives at this point. And I get it. The guy is a goon. The guy is definitely a grifter. But I think that we have to make sure that we're not cutting off our nose to spite our face with something as important as censorship and freedom of speech. So, look, I don't know where we go from here with that kind of stuff. I know personally, I, I, there was a purge on Twitter. I lost like three or 400 followers from people who left. Yeah, Candace, I've uh I've um I've read a little bit of that stuff. I haven't read that particular book that you were talking about, but I'm definitely going to check it out. Oh, Tarni, look, you know, I I I wholeheartedly disagree. I love you to death, but I wholeheartedly disagree. You can that's maybe in other countries, not in America. That's not how we do things. And I I don't care who the person is. I I wouldn't want Ghislaine Maxwell silenced. I would not want any of them silenced because what you do is you push these people to the fringes and then they become fundamentalists and we have shit like Oklahoma City. I can't, I can't have that. I cannot, I just, I can't sit here and act like it's a good thing all because, you know, all because we want to get rid of uh, one man, Right. And I think that the question that should be asked is, why are so many people willing to follow this guy and buy into the snake oil and buy into the bullshit that this QA non psyop was pushing? We need to get to the root of the problem or else we're just going to be spinning our wheels forever. There are a lot of morons out there, but there's a lot of morons on both sides of the aisle. Nah, Jen, I don't, that's, I, I, I disagree wholeheartedly, 100% wholeheartedly. They're going to have to, if that's the case, I went through last night doing my own little test, and if I showed you the Twitter reaction about that poor girl getting killed, it would make your head spin. So there, I don't want to hear anything about, oh, one side is 
has the moral high ground here. They do not. Okay, both sides are a big problem in this country right now. And their divisiveness is just absolutely disgusting. Disgusting. So instead of pushing people away, we should be challenging these stupid ideas that QAnon and this Linwood idiot bring to the table in the public forum, as opposed to shoving them to the side and letting them fester and become all kinds of fucking crazy lunatics. I just can't. I can't. I won't. It's dangerous. It is absolutely dangerous. So you got to remember, this is, this is what I went to school for. You know, political science is what I went to school for. I know how dangerous this dehumanization process is, guys. It's really bad. It is really bad. It's scary. And it's both sides are to blame. And I understand everybody's in their emotions today. I, I get it, right? And it's, it's, it's an emotional subject. Nobody wants to see a bunch of barnyard animals bum rush the Capitol building. It's horrifying to see. It is absolutely beyond horrifying to see. And the fact that this dumbass is hanging out, banging away on Twitter instead of coming down and leading from the front like a true leader should, rolling up your sleeves and telling the people, hey, look, relax. Relax. But that didn't happen. You had people ratcheting it up, ratcheting it up. And then what they're going to do is, the powers that be, they're going to use this as a lever to take away more of our freedoms, just like with the Patriot Act. Mark my words, as sure as we sit here, we'll come back and we'll revisit this. And as sure as I've ever been about anything in the Epstein case, I'm more sure about this. These people are power hungry, all of them. And that's what this is all about. It's all about them being able to have more control. If they can show you that there's a mob of a 500 maniacs storming the Capitol, that resonates, right? People are like, what the hell? We need to get a handle on this. But in my opinion, and look, that it's, that's what it is, just my opinion, right? I'm not saying anyone else is wrong, but we can't shove these people to the background. The background. We have to challenge those ideas and talk about the right way to get things moving forward for a productive society for all of us, or else we're all finished. What did Benjamin Franklin say? Either we all hang together, or surely we'll all hang separately. And that shit is no joke. That That is a 100% uh, um, uh, quote that is for sure. Pop, I have no idea what Donald Trump will do. The guy is unhinged. He's a maniac. I don't know how much more clear I need to be about that. When I talk about censorship, it most certainly has nothing to do with him. The dude is, he's a, he's a crazy man. I, you know, if he, if he pardons Ghislaine Maxwell and she gets out of jail, I, I mean, it will be the, one of the most tragic things in the history of this nation. I mean, honestly, one of the most tragic things in the history of this nation. Is it beyond him? Hell no. He's a, a, a narcissist. He's one of the most arrogant, d- d- rude, disgusting people in the history of the country. So I don't put anything beyond him. There's no doubt about that. But I would like to think that the people around him, the last few vestiges of humanity around him, will not you know, go along with it, or maybe there's some sort of method that justice can step in. I, I have no idea. Yeah, Brunel is still locked up. There's no doubt. He's definitely locked up in France right now. He's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, he's definitely up, Angela. He's in France right now. He's still in jail. Um, he's charged with uh, rape of a child, all kinds of wild shit over there. So I don't think he'll be getting out anytime soon. I mean, I, I you know, again, I'm certainly not a lawyer. I'm you know, lucky I know the little bit about the law in America that I do. But I highly doubt that he's going to be getting out anytime soon um, on the charges that they're holding him on. Yeah, hey, Rob, look, I saw some of that same shit, man. I was just as mortified by seeing people talk about her dying like that as I was about people talking about uh, George Floyd dying. Where has the humanity gone? We're all, aren't we all Americans? And even more so, aren't we all just human beings? And in the middle of a, a fucking pandemic, this is where we're at. This is the kind of people we are. We're looking at a 14-year military veteran and another veteran who went and served in other countries and came home safe and then they die on the steps of the people's house 
that might sit well with some people and some other people might think it's a, a, a good idea to joke around about it and, and dig in on their friends and talk shit. That's not a talk shit type of situation to me. That's not the old, oh, you're a hippie or you're, you know, Alex P. Keaton Republican like it used to be. This shit, this vitriol, it, it's no good. And anyone who is taking delight in that girl dying is fucking gross. And I'll straight say that right now, right here to anyone who has a problem with it, you can fuck yourself. Because it's gross. You're a non-human if you take joy in other people dying. You can say that she made a mistake. You can say that she shouldn't have done what she did. Of course, she shouldn't have. No, but none of them should have done that. But did she deserve to die? Did George Floyd deserve to die for resisting arrest? Of course he didn't. Of course he didn't. Well, you know... Tarnia, I guess the, the response to that could be, and the playing devil's advocate, to defend themselves. They can't count on the cops to defend them, obviously. You had cops behind her with long guns while some, while some the wild man is firing shots downrange. He could have easily hit his boys. These dudes need to get, they, they need to be trained better. There, there needs to be a full investigation about everything that occurred in that, in that whole entire situation. Absolute bullshit absolute bullshit. You know, we can't sit here and act like we have humanity when the cops kill one unarmed person and then be like, oh, well, that's, that person's from a different tribe. No big deal. I, sorry, well, I won't anyway. Like, I won't tell anyone else to do, but I will call people out on their bullshit because it's disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. And a human life is a human life. And unless she was coming in there and she had a gun, and she was aiming a gun at these armed dudes, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, AJF, for sure. France is a, uh, France has some um, pretty goofy laws when it comes to sexual crimes. So it's just one of those weird situations with him being so connected. I'm kind of uh, tentative on ease we're all about calculating the best high for you ran out of shows to watch for the second time this week order an into capri roll social distance park hang pair that awkward picnic with a vaporizer see we're like your weed guy but 420 percent nerdier so just worry about when you're going to take that edible and let us do the rest ease highly calculated cannabis delivery get 30 percent off your first order with promo code nerd at ease.com that's e-a-z-e dot com Progressive Motorcycle presents Road Wisdom from the Motor. Half man, half motorcycle. You grab life with both hands. And you grab your bike with both hands. Therefore, bike is life. Figuratively speaking. Progressive Motorcycle also presents Roadside Assistance. Progressive Motorcycle for those who were born to ride. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. On which way it's going to bounce. So hopefully they keep him in prison for quite some time. I don't know. What, what do you mean? Why does she have to have a gun? She didn't have a deadly weapon. Why didn't the cops have rubber bullets? They didn't think that there was going to be a, a rally. They didn't think there was going to be a chance that there could be violence. Or was it that, let me be cynical for a moment, they wanted this to occur, so we'd have to have this conversation right here. Go, go chew on that for a little while and think about it, okay? Because these people you're cheering for are the same people that were protecting Jeffrey Epstein. All of them. Ask your boy Chucky e. Schumer about the thousands he got from him. I, I don't know, was Eric Garner uh, uh, acting in a threatening manner? Were people that are resisting arrest acting in a threatening manner? No, Kim, she was crawling through a window, dude. And she had cops behind her with long guns. If she was such a threat, why didn't the cops behind her with the long guns handle business? Well, for sure, Jen, statute of limitations are garbage, straight trash. When it comes to something like this, with ample evidence like this and all of these people coming forward, at the very least, there should be an investigation for sure. You can't just kill something like that. There's just so much, so much evidence. 
No, Kim, I get it. I understand. I know. I know it's, it's, it's confusing. How can you be familiar with the situation? Because you're not going to get the real story from the media. They're going to spin it how they want to spin it. They're going to make it out like she is Osama bin Laden with a ponytail. And there's going to be people that eat it up because that confirms their bias. So, uh, you know, everyone has to choose what they believe at this point in life, in time. And you have to choose who you believe who's bringing you the news. I have 900 episodes. You can check my track record. I ain't out here fucking around bullshitting with nobody about nothing. This is serious business. This is serious business what I'm talking about and not just not just the the censorship stuff. I'm not out here messing around. I'm not here out of here bullshitting. We're not out here telling lies. There's no you need to you need to find out people you trust. And I'm not saying that has to be me, but you need to find out people you trust and you need to support those people. You know, Chad, that's the way it seems, bro. I mean, you got people taking over a whole entire a police station up in Oregon and nobody gets blasted. They, they evacuate. So, look, there's a lot of blame to go around. Those people should never have stormed the Capitol. You know how I feel. I believe in civil disobedience. There should have been a sit-in. Everybody should have went to the stairs and sat down and not moved. Force them to arrest you. Why do you have to be violent? Why do you have to attack a Capitol Police officer? Someone hits him with a fire extinguisher? Like, that's going to prove your point? It's, fu- it's, it's just absolute shit, man. It is just absolute shit that this occurred. And that in the middle of everything else we're dealing with, this is what we have to also deal with. Our leaders should be trying to make our lives easier right now, not dividing us further, not some asshole sitting on Twitter when the whole entire capital's inflamed and not going down there and being a leader. But what are we going to do, right? We're going to sit here and we're going to blame each other. We're going to fight. We're going to make snarky posts on, tw- on Facebook to our friends. It's so dumb. I'm, I haven't done that in over a, over a year and a half and I'll never do it again. Well, it would depend. If he pardoned her on the federal crimes that she is being charged with right now, they would have to charge her with a whole new set of crimes or else she would fall under the double jeopardy law. So if he pardons her, then she's going to, she'll walk. Definitely not even a, not even a question. If Donald Trump pardons her federally, she is going to walk. Zero question. But look, I want to believe that there's some vestige of decency in the man and he's not going to do that. I'd, I'd love to believe that. But I guess we'll have to see. Yes, fed crimes only. Yep. They would have to hit her with state charges, Jen. Exactly. And that's why when I always talk about New Mexico having a case running at the same time, how great would that be? And I'd really love the Virgin Islands to turn that C into an R and then have a real RICO case going down there because then we can go in multiple directions. Well, it depends, Kim, on the jurisdiction. We've had, the, this case was originally federal and it got kicked down to state the first time around. So usually a federal uh, indictment will supersede a state indictment because the feds will have jurisdiction and providence. But that's one of the biggest points of contention with this case in the first place because it was kicked down to a state prosecutor when it should have been federal. Chad, I don't think you will either, bro, but the way things are going these days, man, I, I believe like... When they turned on that, that Hadron Collider in like 2011, it knocked us into a different realm of existence, like some sort of different universe because shit is wacky. Yeah, Jen, exactly. They would, they would have to um, initiate charges on what happens in this, uh, on what the, the crimes in the state would be. Virgin Islands would be a great idea. Absolutely. New Mexico and Florida could even bring state charges and New York. They could definitely bring state charges, and I'm pretty sure that uh, Letitia Jones and SDNY would kick down and end up bringing state charges against Maxwell if he pardoned her federally. Because if you notice, that's what they're, they're looking to do to the Trumps as it is. They're working on those state cases right now in New York that have to do with Deutsche Bank, which if you remember, I said months and months and months ago, they should have been doing that from the jump not wasting time and resources and um, political capital on other shit.
That's a good, that's a good ass question, cuz. That is really a good question. And I believe it would have to, it would become a constitutional question. And I'm pretty sure the Supreme Court would step in. Not a hundred percent sure, obviously, but I think that that would be one of those situations where it would have to be adjudicated from the very top. It, it is, Angela, it does sound ridiculous, doesn't it? But we live in ridiculous times, right? And you know me, I have to, I, I will address everything and we'll talk about all the possibilities, right? Hi, Elizabeth. As far as I know, Whitney has very good intentions. Her and I don't agree with a lot of things, but I respect her and I respect her style of journalism and her take no shit attitude. She is, um, she is, she is one of those type of people that she really chases cases correctly, in my opinion. So I think that she is somebody that could be trusted, but like everything else, I believe that you should trust, but always verify, always check everybody's work, right? No, Chad, I get it, bro. <laughs> trust me, I get it. Look, I don't think that I could be causing anyone anxiety about Trump pardoning her at this point. As much as an uproar as people are in right now, people are, you know, People are wild, bro. And you know how I feel. You know me. I, I try to stay real level with all of this and just take the evidence as it comes. I'm just saying nothing would surprise me at this point. The way things have gone in the last year and a half in this case, I can't even call it. No, that was a good question, Elizabeth, for sure. What's up? Let's hit me with a question, bro. <laughs> I'm here to answer your questions. People asking me about Trump, I'll talk about Trump. You want to talk about Epstein? Let's talk about Epstein. Nobody's asking me about Clinton. I'd sure love to blast his bitch ass too. I'm at your disposal, my main dude, Chad. Whatever you'd like to talk about. It comes down to what you believe, right, Elizabeth? It really comes down to, at that point, it's speculation. There's really no evidence one way or the other. Um, I, I believe that Ghislaine Maxwell was an intelligence asset. That's what I believe. I don't believe she was a spy, but an intelligence asset. Uh, J.B. Pritzker, chat. Pretty sure it's J.B. Pritzker, the, uh, the magnate for the hotels. The Pritzkers have a bunch of connections to Epstein, and that's something that hasn't been touched on nowhere near enough. Especially considering that Pritzker, uh, the sister donated a shit ton of money to Biden towards the end of the campaign. You know, MC, with uh, Epstein and the insider trading on 9-11, I actually have a ongoing dialogue with a colleague and this colleague works in the financial sector. It's somebody that I used to associate with when I worked in the financial sector or for the gaming division of CG. And we've been talking a lot about that same sort of thing, insider trading around 9-11 and Jeffrey Epstein around 9-11 as far as, you know, his, um, his behavior, his trading, um, patterns around the time. So I'm definitely digging real deep into the financials. As you guys know, I've, I've really pivoted the show mainly towards the financials as of late. I think that's a very important part of this. And, um, as Chad just mentioned with Pritzker, the Pritzkers are a huge, a huge component here financially. They were really connected with Epstein and JB is also one of the people that Virginia is alleging abused her while she was part of Epstein's trafficking ring. So we have quite the cast of characters that are still running the streets right now. And I think that it's time we, uh, we start hearing about these people more in you know, the so-called legacy media. For sure, Chad, you know, as well as I do, bro. You know as well as I do, just like when you're going after the mafia or you're going after a drug organization or a cartel, follow the money. Eventually, that money is going to lead to some politician or someone who's representing a politician when you're talking about big time dough every single time. And if you want to make a RICO case here, that's the easiest way to do it. Corey, 
You you already know, my dude. They are the absolute worst people on the planet. These people were funding Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell and all of their associates even after everybody knew what Epstein was, even after Epstein was arrested, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. They were giving him IPO tips so that he could fucking turn and burn them. Do you know, you know, people will kill for that kind of stuff. I know people that are on Wall Street that would kill to get those kind of stocks turned and burned like that. But this guy was getting all sorts of easy money plays. And the same people that were helping him out and giving him these easy money plays are the same people that are still right now running Wall Street, running Barclays, running High uh, uh, Bridge, running um, Apollo. And it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Meanwhile, you're paying 26% for your credit card. You're still buried in student debt. You're getting screwed on every single thing you buy. Now, this week was kind of slow, Rob, honestly. Nothing too, uh, nothing too crazy this week. It's been real slow due to everything going on with politics. I've done a couple of um, articles about the financials. We dug into some financial stuff, but nothing too groundbreaking this week. Yeah, look, the, all of those CEOs, I don't trust any of them. I'm pretty clear about that, like... It's it's a very cynical way to look at it. And I don't I try not to be too cynical and I don't want to be one of those people that's like, oh, everything's shitty all the time, oh everything's screwed up, nothing's ever gonna be good. Because there's enough of that, right? Just like there's enough of the constant tribalistic BS. So I don't I try not to get involved in that nonsense too much, but man, these CEOs are just the worst. You know, Rob, I'm not, you know, how can I answer this question correctly? Um, I speak to people in private, but that's pretty much as far as I'm willing to go out of privacy concerns for, for them um, until people are willing to talk about things, you know, in public themselves. And I just don't, uh, it's something I just don't really get into. Kind of like with um, with Maria. I was talking to her for months before I even mentioned it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, um, there is movement with the... Uh, there is movement with the compensation fund. I haven't heard that from any of the survivors, but there is movement with the compensation fund. I have heard that from some other people that are involved. Yeah, you know what, Chad? You we we've been talking about that for quite a minute. I'm I'm definitely going to get into that probably this week because I think we're going to have some time, right? It's going to be slow again. I don't know if there's going to be too much news this week, so I'll dig into that uh, think tank with uh, the brothers, and we'll definitely add that to the catalog. What a rebel, Nicola! You're such a rebel. All you gals from down under are such rebels. Just runs in the blood of you Aussies, huh? Got my main girls, Jen and Lisa, always creeping around. And then don't even get me started with Tarnia. And then Nicole, wherever Nicole is, I don't know where she's hiding out tonight, but she's another one sneaking in the back door all the time. I got my eye on you ladies from down under. You ain't, you can't sneak an Australian by me. You know how Chris Rock says you ain't sneaking a Puerto Rican by him? You ain't sneaking an Australian by me in the back door. I'm paying attention. It's crazy, like, yeah, look, bro, hey, Corey, you know me, dude, you know how I am, you've known me for a long time, and you know me in real life, I'm a very skeptic person at heart, and when I really want something to be true, I'm even more skeptical of it, when the Q drops first started, I thought, hey, you know, this might be a good idea for people to start doing research. But then they started swerving into my lane, the Jeffrey Epstein lane, and muddying my waters. And anyone, I just have to be very, very clear. 
Anyone who gets into my way... In- At Ease, we're all about calculating the best high for you. Ran out of shows to watch for the second time this week? Order an Indica pre-roll. Social distance park hang? Pair that awkward picnic with a vaporizer. See? We're like your weed guy, but 420% nerdier. So just worry about when you're going to take that edible and let us do the rest. Ease. Highly calculated cannabis delivery. Get 30% off your first order with promo code NERD at ease.com. That's E-A-Z-E dot com. You might think President Barack Obama and music icon Bruce Springsteen are unlikely friends. But for more than a decade, the pair has built a relationship around their shared sensibilities and values. Now you can listen to their poignant conversations about fatherhood, race, marriage, music, and the country that's given them both so much. Click the banner to play Renegades, Born in the USA, a Spotify original podcast produced by Higher Ground Audio. Presented by Dollar Shave Club. In this Jeffrey Epstein case is my enemy and is causing me more grief than I need. I already put countless hours into this podcast daily, every single day. So once I found out that these guys were bullshitting about that, what else were they bullshitting about? And once you dig in, there was so much stuff that I could verify myself through my own contacts and sources that I knew it was bullshit. And I tried to tell people that they were being dog walked and I lost friends. And that never happened to me before from people on the right. I had never lost friends over opinions from people on the right before. But people on the left, that had happened quite a bit to me, even my own family members for having a dissenting opinion. But now it's both sides and they are both dealing in absolutes like the Sith. And I'm over here like Luke Skywalker, like, yo, guys, absolutes are for evil people. What are you talking about? So I think that the whole Q thing was one of the greatest psyops that was ever induced and introduced. And I think it it, it served its purpose to make people into what they call now domestic terrorists. So now they're going to be, to be able to label all of us as thus whenever we step out of line. If they want to kill the Epstein case, all they'll say is that I'm passing on disinformation and then I'm going to be banned as well, guys, deplatformed. And that's all because, unfortunately, I know people don't want to hear it, but it's all because people were stuck in their confirmation bias and they got dog walked by Q Anon, who was probably that Ron Code Monkey clown. And this is where we end up. And that poor girl lost her life because of it. All because of confirmation bias, man. And the Capitol Police officer. So that's why I'm so cautious about this shit. And I'm so hesitant to believe nonsense that I can't source for myself. And you know, I don't... I'm not gonna defame all of those people that bought into it either. People are easily, easily convinced of things. Yeah, look, like, Tarnia, you know, and another thing with, with the whole Trump thing for me too is I don't really think that, um, I don't think that, that he has as much power as people give him, right? I think we, we bestowed more power on him, like almost like this mythical boogeyman, whereas we should have just mocked him. And anytime he did something stupid, it should have been mocked and not turned everything into a constitutional crisis. Because now, once we really do have constitutional crisis, and they're coming, well, you cried wolf. Nobody's going to believe you. Oh, it's fake news. So now we find ourselves in a very, very dangerous place where we do not know what the truth is. They're all puppets, Hillary. Every last one of these people in Washington. Every last one of them. I don't trust a single one of these people. You see the way they were all cowering under their desks and shit? These are the people that are sending your children to endless wars, but they're hiding under desks? Yeah, Jen, that's exactly what it is. They felt like they were disenfranchised for whatever reason, or they had bought into the the rhetoric that, you know, their lives are going to be completely changed if the other side wins, when in reality, we know, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Life goes on for us plebeians, us poor people. 
Sure, we might get some more taxes or, you know, they might change a law here and there to make it look like they're doing something for us. But in reality, are they really? They're not. They're not. They don't care. They can make our lives so much better, but they don't care. And that's just, that's just the, the truth. You know, Pop, that's a good question. I would think that with the RICO case, if there's anything left over after they pay out through the settlements, that the government will seize that money. The government loves to seize money. Yeah, look, Angela, for sure, I've been fighting this this fight all day with people trying to drive it home that let's let's just leave Trump out of the equation. He's a non-factor in, in 12 days, in, in seven days or whatever. Yeah, I, I definitely think that that money will get, be seized by the government the same way they do with the, the mafia. They're uh, they're notorious for that shit. They love it. And it, I honestly, though, I don't think any should be left over. I think I've been pretty clear about that. And I don't care if people, oh, it's a money grab. Yeah, I think it should be a money grab. You lived through what those girls went through for all of these years. All of that weight of all of those uh, situations of abuse and nobody believing you. It's BS. They always are, Jen, aren't they? And that's bureaucracy on its face. No matter the bureaucracy you're dealing with, the administrative costs are more than the money that goes out to help people or goes out to the the uh, survivors in this in- instance. And it's just one of my biggest problems, I think. I, you know, other people want the system just to work. I want to fix the system because it doesn't work. And I know that... I'm fighting an uphill battle and I know that especially in these times, it's going to be hard, but I'm going to continue steadfast with the message that I've been pumping for 18 months now. You know, it's, it's, it's a long road. Uh, PDO, I just bought the package. With Laffy on the squad now, there's no doubt I am watching every single Ranger game this year. Especially considering I work from home now. Yeah, Ghislaine Maxwell is out of control with the whole situation of not trying to um, let Annie and the other Doe drop their civil cases. I've never heard anything like that in my life. Yeah, look, I've, I, I would guess that the payouts are in uh, the larger range for some of these girls. And I would expect that there might be some smaller payouts as well. We have, what, 113 claimants, roughly? So I'm guessing that it will depend on the veracity of the claim and how well they can source it. That would probably be one of the main parameters of these payouts. And I would guess underage girls would really be looking at a decent um, chunk of change coming their way. You would think that that's the way it's administered and that's the way that they're going to uh, go about this. Because it's pretty important, right? That this that they do this the right way. These girls have been they've been screwed around enough. Yeah, you did read that. You know, I was going to talk about that, but the article was super short, and it wasn't worth a whole episode. She is definitely asking for the uh, bell for the third time. It's ludicrous. She's not going to get it. You know, Pete, I think uh, right now, because the situation has changed a bit, I think that there is more eyes on Ghislaine Maxwell, and it would be damn near impossible for them to have lightning strike twice the same way they had it 
the first time around. And I also don't believe they have the same kind of assets in a female prison as they would in a male prison. For instance, Tartaglioni, from Westchester, by the way, my neck of the woods, he's the perfect candidate to have in a cell with Epstein if you're looking to pass on a message of harm to Jeffrey Epstein, right? A guy facing four felony charges. But with Ghislaine Maxwell, I think it would be a whole lot harder for them to pass that off the second time around. So what I think they're doing with Maxwell is I believe that the people that are on high, they've burned all of their connections to, um, to Maxwell and they've been able to cover their tracks after all of these years. Remember, we're dealing with intelligence types, people that know how to burn assets when they're done with them. And that's exactly what we're dealing with here, man, that kind of situation. Now, as far as her safety moving forward, I don't know. I mean, you, you, again, we're dealing with some very dangerous people, some very untrustworthy people. And when their backs are against the wall, who the hell knows what they're going to be capable of? Yeah, I think you're right, Jen. Time's definitely probably something that comes into it. There's, I bet you there's a bunch of different things that go into it. And when it's all said and done, I'll, I'll be very interested to go back and take a look at whatever they unseal and let us uh, get a look-see at. Because I'm interested to see how the process works, right? You know, um, it's just one of those things that are it's just pretty interesting how this kind of thing goes down. I, you know, Pete, it's it's really crazy, right, that a situation like this could even occur in the year 2020, 2021. I mean, your your pops worked in law enforcement forever. Imagine if your dad didn't follow chain of custody or if your pops fell asleep at work and Epstein hurt himself. Can you imagine the uproar? Meanwhile, you have the only people on the hook for falling asleep that night are the two guards no bosses. There was never anyone in trouble for chain of custody when the tapes were lost. Yeah. So, you know, the whole thing's just an absolute shit show. Oh, there she is. What's up, Lisa? Now, folks, if you aren't aware yet, Lisa is starting a new podcast. And it's going to be dealing with Erica Jane and Mr. Girardi from The Real Housewives. And your boy is going to be on it sometimes. How about that? Because you all know I love my reality TV. Yep, always nothing. Chad, that's that's their favorite move, bro. You know and I know that that is their favorite move. And in jail like that, women's prison, you don't have rough riders the way you do in a male prison. Now, you have women that are about it, there's no doubt. You have like Latin kings and there's there there's uh, ladies that roll with the Mexican mafia and if someone gets greenlit, then, then they'll have to take care of that. But I just don't see them trying that same move with Maxwell. I think instead with Maxwell, what they'll end up doing is they will just let her burn. And they've insulated themselves so much at this point that it won't matter. <laughs> you already know, PDO. You already know. It's always been the case, right? The working class poor getting shit on by Tammany Hall and boss man Tweed. So what do you do? You go to the Godfather and you ask for his friendship. And that's how the country's been forever. And it's still like that. It's still effed up. And the people that cheer on these despots that take away our rights, just I'll never understand it. I just don't get it. Yeah, when I say insulated themselves, Chad, I mean like the agencies themselves, whoever the handlers were directly. Now, when we're talking about like some of the enablers, like the um, the Dubins of the world, I think you're right. I think she definitely does have the, the, the goods on them. I'm talking more along the lines of the actual people who put these operations into play, 
right? Those are the scumbags I'm talking about. The same MFers that are right now at some black site waterboarding some Yemeni citizen. Those are the people I'm talking about. Not the, the enablers. They're going to, if they, if they prosecute this the right way, like we've discussed a bunch, they're going to get nailed with Rico because of these financial crimes at the very least, without a doubt. But I'm just, I think that the, the ones who initiated it all, the actual real spies, those people have already burned all of their ties already. You, and that's just how they work. That is how they work. And we have seen it in our own country with our own uh, security forces time after time. And, you know, I was listening to a interview on Joe Rogan with some... I don't even know what the guy is, some kind of author or psychologist, whatever the hell it is. But he was talking about how Charles Manson was a CIA asset and was converted using MK Ultra. And it sounds off the wall batshit crazy, right? The dude had all sorts of sources, all kinds of stuff. So I just don't, I don't put it past the CIA to have anyone as an asset at this point. Um, you know, Elizabeth, I don't know, probably for a little while longer. What is it? 748. The last couple of these have went two hours. So I'm guessing at least another half an hour, the latest, I had another half an hour, the earliest 45 minutes, hours, something like that. Yeah. You know, Chad, it, it, I think that you're right though, too, with the government officials, those kind of people could easily be burned. I think it depends on what the intelligence angle, the, those people on that, at that end of it want to do. Thanks for stopping by, Elizabeth. I, I really appreciate you joining. <laughs> All right, I got you, Chad. I'm hanging in there. I was banging out one of these uh, these Celsius energy drinks right here. You know, I try to look for the cleaner energy drinks, right? Nothing with like sugar and shit. And this seems to be the cleanest one. And considering my girlfriend is a physical uh, trainer, I mean a personal trainer, uh, she doesn't give me too much shit for drinking these, so... You too, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for popping in. I hope that your dinner is scrumptious. I agree with that, Lisa. And I don't think Epstein was as, as powerful as people believe. Oh, sure. Epstein's so powerful that they're hiding him and he's alive. Yeah, right. He was a burned asset, just like many, many more, just like Robert Maxwell was, in my opinion. I don't think he was an intelligence agent. I think he was an asset. He was burned, just like Epstein, in my opinion. And that's what they do to these people when they're done with them. As soon as they outlive their usefulness, see you later. They don't have any regard for human life. They could care less. They don't, they don't care. They don't care at all. Just take a look at the way they operate around the world. Take a look at, you know, we don't even talk about Yemen really, right? And the, the, the greatest outbreak in almost modern history of cholera was ripping through Yemen and nobody was talking about it. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia is dropping 5 million thousand pounds of bombs on Yemen that we're providing them. So it's, oh, the CIA is just the worst in my opinion. I don't know how anyone can cheer on anyone from the CIA. I honestly, they leave such a bad taste in my mouth that it's almost indescribable. We were driving the other day and there was a, a commercial on the radio the CIA recruiting people on the radio, FM radio. I looked over at Carrie and I almost crashed the car in anger as I started raging. What are, I mean, it's not bad enough that these guys invade every aspect of our lives. But now you got to be on the regular radio and you're recruiting people off of the radio as well. I just, ugh, just, there needs to be like an audit of the intelligence agencies because... They're out of control and there's no oversight. Who oversees the intelligence communities? A committee? The Senate committee, huh? Hmm, it's pretty. That, we can really expect those people to take care of us, huh? The people that sit on those Senate committees, they really care about us. They're really all in on our welfare. Just take a look at the, uh, the war in Iraq. Just take a look at the never-ending war in Afghanistan. Just take a look at every single place the American people are, where we shouldn't be. 
And you wonder why the rest of the world has started to hate us. Uh, dude, Obama was the, the king of the drone. You know that we've talked about this, you and I, before. Dude was the king of the drone. As much as I dislike Al-Qaeda, and everybody knows that I do, you can't drone strike American citizens without due process. Uh, so what, you're the judge, the, the, the jury, and the executioner now? You're going to drone strike American citizens? I don't care if it's Anwar Al-Awaki, Al-Awaki. I don't care who it is. If they're an American citizen, you arrest them and you prosecute them. But no, we have an out-of-control military-industrial complex that'll do whatever they want. And these are the same people that had their fingers so deep in the Jeffrey Epstein pie that they were up to their wrists. Who's that, Lisa? Who's the one person? Because I'll tell you what, man, everybody I know pretty much that has ever been in politics has ended up either turning into a, a maniac or was a maniac, a narcissistic maniac at, from the beginning. I've had a lot of people ask me. Oh, there's no doubt, Chad. Oh, there's zero doubt about that, bro. Within a year, we'll be in some foreign entanglement as the policemen of the world dropping freedom on people in the variety of a 2,000 pound bombs. <laughs> yeah, the people on both sides are great, Tarnia. The people on, the, on both sides are great. The actual people like Democrats and Republicans for the most part are just good people. It's the assholes amongst them, you know, the, the, the few voices amongst both groups that make both sides seem insufferable. Yeah, the CIA, look, that, that's what they do, right? They go in and they cause destabilization and they work for regime change everywhere they go. And they're, that's what, they're, that's what the, the, their plan is here now. And that's why I, I, it makes me so crazy that people can't see the forest through the trees here. They want to do the same thing here. They want to quash any dissent as you being a foreign, I mean, a domestic terrorist all of a sudden. And if people on the left think that's not going to come from them, for them, it is. Already left, uh, people on the left, content creators are being targeted. You think the establishment enjoys people like them? They do not. They don't want any dissenting voices, folks. And those of us who believe in the truth, we got to stick together. Even if we have some disagreements along the way, we have to stick together. Because if not, they're going to pick us off one at a time. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not willing to cede my freedom of speech to anybody. Yeah, the military-industrial complex is a huge problem. It's right there with the banksters working hand-in-hand -hand to destabilize the whole entire world. They are the heart that pumps it, Chad. There's zero doubt. These people are... You have to be sick to join the CIA. Like, what, I don't know, what do you lay around at night? Oh, I can't wait to join the CIA and go and destroy people's countries. Tristan, what's up? LGR, baby, let's go. This is the year, my man. Ranger time. Couple of tough years leading up to this. You know, couple of uh, lean years. But I really like the direction the team is going, and I love the youth on the back line. Oh, the CIA, they run everything, Tarnia, no doubt about it. The, the five eyes, and, the, you know, they, they play the rest of these other countries like puppeteers. And I don't know why other countries stand for it. I hope that other countries start standing up to the American intelligence apparatus and tell them to get stuffed. But the problem is they're all in on it together. All these other countries, you know, Australia included, they don't want you guys to be free. A free society is a dangerous society. They want you to just have enough freedom so you feel content. That's, that's the goal. Give them bread in the circus, just like in Rome. That's the goal. Not too much, though. I want you to feel anxious. You always got to, oh, what's the next disaster coming? What do I do? Oh, no, oh, no, I, I got to watch the news. And they get us all caught up in these crazy cycles.
yeah, JFK wanted to destroy the CIA. And there's a lot of people that say that that was the reason he was assassinated. I've never really dug into the assassination of JFK, but it seems like a quality reason in my opinion. The CIA is dangerous as hell. And I know for a fact they've used the mafia before. The FBI used the mafia to go and help them find some KKK members down south. Who's that, uh, AJF uh, uh, Kennedy? I think Kennedy got, got killed because he was the first president in quite some time that wasn't owned by these scumbags. Somebody that actually wanted to help the American people. Yeah, these Senate committees are a joke, Pete. You know, they got a Senate committee, a committee for steroids and baseball, but we've never had the Jeffrey Epstein clan up there getting fucking ripped by, uh, by our sitting senators or Congress people. Because at the end of the day, they don't care. If they can't parlay it into votes, they don't care. And you all know, I used to be involved in all that tribalism myself. I was caught up in all of that hubbub, thinking one side's better than the other, like anybody cared about me. And then came George Bush, Mr. Dick Watt himself. And my whole entire life changed. I realized very soon that none of these people cared about me. And I was on my own and I had to worry about, you know, making my life better as much as I possibly could, because if I was waiting for someone like George Bush to do it, I'm waiting for, I was going to be waiting for quite some time and nothing's gotten better since then. I mean, Obama, he gave, you know, gave a, a good speech, but he didn't make my life better. Yeah, you know, since Bill Barr has told us that there's nothing to see, I have just decided not to look into the case anymore. He is such a trustworthy individual. I mean, listening to Bill Barr, that's about as good of an idea as stumbling into a grizzly bear who is with its cub. That's, That's how good of an idea it is to listen to Bill Barr. The dude's an absolute scumbag. I think that there was a power struggle, AJF, 100%. There was definitely a power struggle within the intelligence community when it comes to Venezuela. And as much as I'm not a fan of Venezuela, I never wanted our fingers there or our fingerprint there at all. Can there be any countries in South America or Central America that we're not screwing around in? No, never though with the CIA. They have to have their dirty fingers everywhere. Yeah, and, and you know, it's funny, Chad, because he was he was balls deep in the Justice Department during the Bush administration as well. And that's what that's where I how I knew he was a scumbag from the very jump. And when he was chosen by Trump, I just shook my head and, and laughed about it because I knew exactly what kind of scumbag that we were going to be dealing with. A liar, a cheater, and the you know, the ban goes on. And if anyone thinks that Merrick Garland's going to be any different. Uh, I have a, a big surprise for you. You know, Rob, I don't know. Like, with the, the way the Democrats are going right now, who knows who they're going to pull in front of them for investigations when all the smoke clears. Now, I, I, don't, I don't know if they're going to have precedent to do something like that. But as of now, it looks like Barr is going to be able to skate without ever answering any questions about his role in any of this. And when it comes to a guy like Barr, I think if anyone should ever have to sit down under oath and speak on some things, it should be him, especially in the Epstein case. I'd love to see the survivor's lawyers try and get him subpoenaed and get him uh, under oath about that video and shit. He's the only one that saw it. Come on. But with the new uh, attorney general that's coming in under 46, Merrick Garland, I don't have any confidence in him either. Dude graduated from Harvard. What's his relationship with Dershowitz?
Oh, yeah. They, look, as far as putting things into action, there's no better organization than the CIA when it comes to spycraft. Everybody else has learned how to do it from the CIA. That's why I laugh myself to death when people are like, the Mossad, the Mossad, oh, the Mossad. No, no. The Mossad had their part, of course, but they're not the ones facilitating shit on American soil. Believe that. There is nothing going on on American soil that the CIA doesn't have their big-ass heads involved in. And as far as the other parts of the world, oh yeah, they start sowing seeds quite early, hoping they'll grow. Just look at what happened in Iran with the Shah. Yeah, you know, Tarnia, that's one of my biggest issues as a voter is the endless wars and the devastation and the pain that they have created for people around the world. I used to be a big proponent of that stuff when I was younger and I didn't understand the costs. It's real people. It was just people on a TV to me. They were dehumanized to me because I watched these idiots on the news all day. Oh, yeah, there's evil people. Oh, yeah, bomb them, bomb them. And they played on our emotions. And as I've gotten older and I look back, I realize how just absolutely horrible and horrendous it is for the United States to do the things that they do in some of these countries. And we have to understand that as Americans and we have to clean our own yard up first before we can tell our neighbors what to do in their yard, right? What sort of hypocrite are you if you have a yard full of trash, but you're yapping about your neighbor's trees? So I, I think that it's a good idea to focus on some in-house cleaning here in America and uh, get rid of some of these psychopath warmongers. Vietnam, right. Vietnam was absolute bullshit. Started on a lie, the Gulf of Tonkin. We can go on and on about these things that were considered conspiracy that actually turned out to be true. Yeah, he doesn't understand the separation of power, for sure. The Iranian people are some of the greatest people in the world, Chad. And the Persian culture is one of the most richest and incredible cultures in the history of the world. The Iranian people are like 80% under like 30 years old or something like that. And they all want to be part of the Western world. It's those crazy ass, uh, you know, uh, uh, mullahs and uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Mahdi, the 11th Mahdi, that are, are really screwing things up over there. The, the people of, of Iran are amazing people. I have met so many incredibly awesome Persian people. And their culture, people who like history like me, I'm, I'm infatuated with their culture as it is. And that's just another thing that angers me about Iran, that they've had their culture hijacked by these lunatics, right? These these crazy people who truly believe in mutual destruction and that they're going to end up in paradise if they do so. So I agree with you there. The, the people of Iran are amazing people. Yeah, that note that we didn't support, that we should have been supporting like, like crazy. Hell yeah. You know, the CIA, they love to put their fingers in places where they, they don't belong. At Ease, we're all about calculating the best high for you. Ran out of shows to watch for the second time this week? Order an Indica pre-roll. Social distance park hang? Pair that awkward picnic with a vaporizer. See? We're like your weed guy, but 420% nerdier. So just worry about when you're going to take that edible and let us do the rest. Ease. Highly calculated cannabis delivery. Get 30% off your first order with promo code NERD at ease.com. That's E-A-Z-E dot -E com. At Ease, we're all about calculating the best high for you. Ran out of shows to watch for the second time this week? Order an Indica pre-roll. Social distance park hang? Pair that awkward picnic with a vaporizer. See? We're like your weed guy, but 420% nerdier. So just worry about when you're going to take that edible and let us do the rest. Ease. Highly calculated cannabis delivery. Get 30% off your first order with promo code NERD. Nerd at ease.com. That's E A Z E.com. But they don't want to help out in Iran, huh? Yeah, see, that would have, that's awesome, Tarni. I've always wanted to go to Syria 
Jordan and Egypt. I mean, the historical, just the historical factor alone of going to places like that is mind boggling to me. As an American, I really wish I could get to more places like that because I, I want to go to Petra. I obviously want to go to the pyramids. I'd love to walk down the streets where Jesus walked, even though I'm not a Christian. I think it was a little bit after that, AJF. I think for me it was when I had a friend come home from uh, doing a tour of duty in Iraq. And we sat down and we talked about the carnage and the effect that our bombing campaign was having on the country and the people. And that's when I think that things really changed for me. Same as usual, Tristan, nothing really. Those internal investigations, they're just more, uh, you know, garnish, right? Oh, look, we're doing something. Look at me. I care. Blah. In reality, though, if they really cared, they'd be sitting down with the FBI and investigators. But they don't, they don't really care. That's not their goal. Their goal is to uh, appease their shareholders and to hopefully try and staunch some of the bleeding that's happening in Wall Street because they were getting rocked for a while. Now, I'm sure that they're not getting as cracked anymore, right? But as this goes on and we have more information come out about Leon Black, I think we'll see even more of him backpedaling and that the fallout from this whole entire Epstein situation turning him into like the toxic Avenger with all of the radiation glow because he is, he was really connected to Jeffrey Epstein. And what I think and what I actually talk about on the podcast in regards to Leon Black, I'll just say that there's a huge chasm between the two. And that's only because, you know, you know how I feel, right? It's not what I know, it's what I can prove. Scotty T, what's up, baby? Much mahalo, Scotty T. You know, it looks like the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family is really at the point where he has no recourse. There's no coming back as far as the royal family is concerned. Um, I'm certainly not an expert on the monarchy, but it looks like the queen is coming to the end of her days as far as being the monarch. So once she's gone, I know that her brother, I, I mean, uh, his brother really hates him. So I wouldn't be surprised if his brother banishes his ass. I mean, I would put him in the Tower of London. Put him in the Iron Mask and throw him in the Tower of London and let him rot to death. You know, after the trial, of course. But that's where he would end up if I was the King of England, that's for sure. Pop, I think that they don't even need to do that. I think that they, they have to try and reach the voters who are disaffected by the whole entire situation. You know, there's a lot of um, lower middle class voters that used to be Democrat that the Democrats have lost. And I think that they, the, the, the DNC should reach out to those people and try and bridge the gap instead of trying to push them further out into the margins. Yeah, it certainly looks like that's the way of it, Chad. I think he's starting to understand that he's in big trouble here. And it's not just socially. He's going to be facing serious criminal penalties, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, Jen, no. I, why would you guys... If I, if I lived in Australia, I wouldn't want anyone to come to my country. None of these sick people... We got this nice island here. It's beautiful. Got a bunch of kangaroos, all kinds of great ocean, all kinds of cool ass people that are always, seems to me, every Australian I've ever met when I was working at the Hard Rock, even the sports book, every Australian that came in just wanted to have a good time. I never had to throw out one single Australian ever in my whole entire time uh, in management in a casino. Now, English folks, on the other hand, my fellow friendly English folks, 
I've had to toss a few of you guys out. But Australians, they seem to be the happiest, nicest, pe nicest people in the world. Every single time they were in, I've associated with them. I've had nothing but good to say. And besides ever going places like Italy, like moving to Italy, because I certainly would do that, Australia is like one of the only other places I would ever even consider moving outside of the United States. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the Australian people certainly don't want him there. The English people definitely don't want him there either. I mean, where can you send him at this point? Greenland, maybe? Can we find a place in Greenland to put him? How about in Antarctica? I'm sure the penguins... Would, would, would love to have a conversation with him. I mean, they don't believe him, but I'm sure they'd like to have a conversation with him. That's a good idea, Mars. Hell yeah. Yeah, you know, that's a, uh, that's certainly a good question, Tr uh, Trist uh, Tristan, but I think that what he would try and do is cut a deal. He would try and cut a deal and get himself time off by serving up what he would say are bigger fish, right? If he could serve up somebody like, say, Donald Trump or President Clinton, then I'm pretty sure that the feds would, as gross as it sounds, cut him some kind of deal. They do it all the time, unfortunately. How about we just throw him into a live volcano? That's, uh, or if you want to send him to Mars, strap him to the outside of the rocket with a GoPro. Yeah, look, AJF, you get it, bro. You're, and for people that don't know, Anthony is a, a true liberal uh, in the classic sense of the word. He's, he cares about free speech. He cares about the things that are important. And, you know, he has his, his other beliefs, right? But he's a good person. And at the end of the day, that's what's more, the most important thing to me, is that you're a good person and you're coming from a place of concern and you can back up your opinions and your assertions. But the, the establishment Democrats, like, like AJF was saying there, they're, they're, they're not interested in unity. They're not interested in uh, an olive branch. They want complicity. I mean, they want compliance. So you're either going to comply or they're, they're going to erase you from existence. And if you think that what we're doing here and the Jeffrey Epstein case and the investigation that is occurring isn't at risk by their censorship, I, 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 I really suggest that you give it another look because it's a dangerous, slippery slope when you start censoring people. Because who's the arbiter of that? You know, who do we trust to be the arbiter of that? I trust you to be the arbiter of that. And you know what I mean? When I say that, I mean, if it's a crazy idea, you're not going to listen to it. You're not going to follow that person. Yeah, they're definitely throwing fuel on the fire. And the rhetoric that they're using right now is not helping at all. You can't, you know, you can't keep using this kind of charged rhetoric and not expect people to react. We, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't, I can't put it any better way than that. People are not going to just stand by and feel like, they're having their rights taken from them, even if they're, they might not be having the rights that they think taken from them, but if they feel like that, and they feel like they have no voice anymore, that's how you disenfranchise people. That's how you create extremists. And anyone who's ever worked in an insurgency overseas, as far as in an intelligence position or a, a soldier, will tell you, a very quick way to create radicals is to go into a place and oppress them. And when you start shutting off dissenting opinions and you start shutting off dissenting voices, 
you're going to push people to the fringes. And that's where they become dangerous. And I don't know about you, but I think there's enough crazy sons of bitches on the planet and in this country. We don't need more extremists, right? We had a guy in a Native American headdress break into the Capitol, for, for God's sakes. We need more maniacs in the country? We need to push people like that to the fringes? Or how about we keep them in the public conversation and we mock them? No, not too many thoughts on Mr. Farkas. I, you know, I just, here's, here's the way I look at it. I just, I wish we were at a place where we could have some hard conversations without everyone's feelings getting hurt. You know, like, what happened to the old days of us sitting down, having a good, strong, hard conversation, getting heated up maybe, and then afterwards saying, ah, you know what, let's have a beer. That doesn't happen anymore. Now it's scorched earth policy. Everybody is treating everything like it's Roman Carthage. Let's salt the land and we can never have a relationship ever again. And I don't get it. I don't get it and I don't like it. I don't like where we're going. And I'm not going to be quiet about that. That's for sure. There's just, there's too much at stake. There's too much at stake. If you guys, if you, if you want justice in this case, and you think people like Virginia and Maria and Annie and Courtney and all of the other girls deserve justice, then you should be mortified by any sort of censorship. I think that, Pop, I think that they're definitely talking to the core four. Um, they've probably been in contact with um, Indyke. At, he might be even under sealed indictment at this point. I, I'd give it probably a 60% chance that he's under sealed indictment. I don't have evidence to prove that, obviously, but you would think that he is definitely in the mix. And the core four, I wouldn't be shocked now that we have Maxwell's trial coming up if they're speaking to the prosecutors trying to catch themselves a deal, looking for that proper agreement. Because they probably have some pretty important information to share with prosecution about what occurred. Now it all comes down to behind the scenes wrangling, right? How many years are they going to get off? Are they going to cut, uh, get a deal cut for them for the information? You know, it just comes down to all of that wrangling now. So I think it's happening, but I don't know if we're going to hear about it anytime soon. And that's why I think it's important that we the people do it as opposed to leave it up to the political parties. It starts with us, with our conversations with each other, right? If we have civility amongst ourselves, then the nonsense on the news won't drive a wedge between us. The rage porn on the news won't make us want to hate each other then. If we start and we have respect for each other with our conversations, even if we disagree. And that's the approach I try to take, especially with all of you. You know, I, I, our, we don't agree about, about everything, a lot of us, right? But I respect all of you enough to listen to what you have to say. And if we don't even do that, then how are we ever going to bridge any gaps? I think, Tristan, I think that a lot of that had to do with the control aspect of it. Epstein had so much control via his relationships with powerful people, his money, and the opulence that these girls from broken and disenfranchised homes saw around him that they were caught up in a, a web, right? And him showing them that just added to the layer upon layer of how much of a extensive operation this was. And if you try and rat me out, you see how powerful I am. Everything's on video. I have you on video now. And it's a powerful thing, right? Especially if you're somebody who doesn't have anything and you're poor and you go to a place like this with opulence and money and wealth and you're groomed and procured and you feel like you're part of something, well... Epstein is going to use all sorts of uh, uh, moves to manipulate you. Exactly right. Conditioning.
Yeah, it all it feeds into his narcissism, right? We talk about that a lot. And I just received another email from Dr. Uh, Dr. DeLay, and I'm going to have him come on the podcast again, and we're going to talk about narcissism again. Maybe I'll see if he'll come on one of these live streams even. I think that would be kind of cool. What do you guys think about that? Have some guests on these live streams? That might be a good idea. Yeah, exactly. 100%, Jen. I agree with that. Uh, just another layer, right, in the whole entire shell of my control over you. Epstein got off on the control almost as much as the physical act. And that just played right on top of it. Yeah, I think that this is a, this would be a good forum for uh, some live interviews and some live conversations with some people on on the air. You know, I'm going to start doing some more uh, some more interviews in 2021 with certain people, and you know, I really think that this might be the proper forum for it because you guys can ask questions as we're doing it. You can engage with the guests. And we can, you know, I can learn some stuff from you guys too. For sure. That kind of money, you know, if you're not around that kind of money, it's it's a bit off-putting, right? You know, you show up and somebody has all of this wealth and all of this power and you see everybody else is getting on to get along and everyone's doing the same thing around you. It's It's, it's a lot. It is a lot. And these guys are very, very good at getting these girls to believe that they're part of something. And that was all part of the grooming process and the conditioning process. And that's where the core four came in. They were so good at that, right? What girl is going to think someone like Elaine Maxwell is going to abuse them? Oxford, smart as hell, quippy speaks well, sounds like every lady on every one of these TV shows, Mary Poppins and shit, right? Oh, yeah, this lady ain't gonna screw with me. She's a nice lady. I'm gonna go make a couple hundred bucks. Cool, perfect. Then before you know it, you're caught up in this whole entire web, and there you go. Yeah, we know Epstein wasn't above providing drugs or alcohol to these girls. And I, I wouldn't be shocked if it's more prevalent than we've even heard yet, Chad. I, I would not be shocked if it's even more prevalent than we've heard. A lot easier to make somebody comply when they're high on tranquilizers, right? Put some benzos in somebody's drink. It's a little easier to make them comply. And we know for a fact Jean-Luc Brunel did it. We heard from Fizia told us about that, you know, way before he even got arrested. So we know it's something that was in their in uh, in their playbook and something that they were not above. So Yep, 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 yep. There is also, you know, the the a lot of uh reports about the dentist chairs and the the dentists that were down there. It's, it's wild. It's really wild. She was, Jen. She was his public face, right? We've discussed this, you and I and Lisa, we've discussed this at length. She was the public face. She was the one that opened all of the doors. Yeah, prevalent as far as when we're talking about the modeling part of this, Chad. With the modeling, the girl, the girls that were brought in from like Eastern Europe and stuff, you hear nothing but tales of um, the the drug use with Jean Luc Brunel, that aspect of it. So that's why I wouldn't be shocked if you know there was some of that perhaps also bleeding over with Epstein in some regard when it comes to especially those models from Eastern Europe. Oh, come on, we can't eat no kangaroos. Not until I get to play with one, right? I already told you, I gotta... Those are my boys. I don't think I could eat one of those things, man. 
I'm such a, I'm such a soft heart when it comes to that kind of stuff. Like, if I had to kill my own animals to eat them, I don't know if I could do it. I'll just be straight up, straight up with you guys. I'm soft when it comes to that shit. You know, the, the funny thing is, Tristan, his next door neighbor was my old boss, Howard Lutnick. So I always wonder what Howard knows. What, you never heard nothing through those walls? You never popped over for a beer? I mean, all of those people around him had to have known that something was amiss, right? We heard from the CEO of, uh, the old CEO of Reddit, who came out and said everybody knew what Ghislaine Maxwell was. We had Cindy McCain who came out and said, oh, everybody knew what they were doing. And I'm sure that there are plenty of more, uh, plenty more people in the so-called circle of elites who knew exactly what the deal was. Yeah. And, and think about this for a minute. And this should be a sobering fact for people. John McCain was a very powerful senator when he was alive, like him or not. And for Cindy McCain to say that he was untouchable, that should show you and tell you everything you need to know about the levels of power where Epstein was rolling around. Them are, those are the kind of places of power that you and I can't even imagine. Oh boy, I don't. You guys have to sneak with sneak it, right? Uh, Bobby, here's a a regular hamburger, but it's really a kangaroo burger. What is it called? Like a roux burger or something? I guess I could probably eat it if I don't have to kill it. I draw the line at killing it, though. I can't kill creatures, man. I've always been like, you know, like when animals would die on like TV shows and cartoons and stuff. When I was a kid, I would cry like a baby. And still to this day, like when those the commercials come on, like the dogs that are like mistreated, I have to like turn the channel because it freaks me out. Um, there was a couple of different girls. I know one of the girls was a uh, one a uh, prime minister's daughter. No, I'm not wearing leather shoes right now. I'm wearing some uh, Adidas hiking shoes, actually, Rob. But I get your point. No, look, I'm not against animals being killed. I just can't do it. That's all. I'm telling you, I just I, animals dying freaks me out, man. I don't, I don't dig it. Like I, you know, I'm certainly not a vegan or anything. I eat meat, of course, but. The only way I could ever kill an animal, I think, is A, to, to save my life, or if, like, I was starving to death in, like, an end-of-the-world situation or something. I just can't see myself doing it. I don't know. Yeah, giving up pork would be hard. I don't know if I could do that, Anna. I honestly don't know if I could do that. I love bacon. Good God, I love bacon. Especially when I'm hiking. Like I'll go, we'll go hiking or we'll go camping or whatever, and I'll make sure it's a necessity that I have bacon with me for the morning, even if it's like some kind of bacon bits or gotta have some sort of bacon in the morning when I wake up hiking. I could get down with watching some dogs bite these idiots in the nuts. That would be awesome. We could put that on pay-per-view. I know that we could probably push that for about, hmm, I don't know, bare-knuckle boxing gets 20 bucks a pop, so we should probably be able to make some dough. 25 maybe, 25 bucks a, uh, a head to watch your dogs bite these dudes in the nuts. Be the perfect fate for them. They deserve that and more. Yeah, you know that that it's it's a weird situation when it comes to these uh, these investigations in places like New Mexico. Like, I wish I could give you a reason why New Mexico is such a shithole, but I I can't. I don't know what's going on down there.
Yeah, that'll teach him. I don't think it takes many bites from a German shepherd to the nether regions to teach you a lesson. Lisa's a busy gal, you know, she got things to do. She has to get uh, our reality TV show situation squared away. Yeah, I got an early morning tomorrow. Yep, I, I'm leaving tomorrow to go to the mountains. I think we're leaving at 3 a.m. tomorrow. I'll have to check that out, Chad, for sure. I'll have to uh, add that to the old playlist. I'm always looking for a good podcast to check out. A lot of times I don't listen to Epstein-related podcasts, though, like I told you guys. I don't want it to bleed over into my content. So besides listening to uh, Jen and Lisa, my compadre since the very beginning, pretty much, I really don't listen to too many other Epstein podcasts, especially the, the packaged ones, the ones that are just scratching the surface. It's not worth it for me at this point. In the last, like, 10 days... I've seen a noticeable drop in interest in this case due to the situation. Yeah, that look, the the um, Santa Fe Institute is a creepy ass place. I wish that I got more footage when I was there before the dude threw me out. The place was just a creepy ass place. Like, it was, like, pretty, don't get me wrong, like a beautiful layout. But it was just, like, I don't know, man. There's something about it. It had, like, this, I don't know, weird feeling in the air for me. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I can't really, I can't call it. It was, like, one of those gut feelings where you know you're in a place that's kind of up to no good. And even without the Epstein angle, the shit that they got going on at the Santa Fe Institute scares me to death. These scientists are wild, bro. The stuff that these dudes are working on, some wild shit. And look, dude, that, that whole entire, that whole entire situation at Santa Fe Institute is buggy, dude. When I go back, hopefully in February, I'm going to get way more footage up there and hopefully they don't throw me out this time. Yeah, this, all those scripted podcasts, I can't deal with them, Jen. I mean, who, really? I mean, enough's enough. How many times are we going to learn the Genesis story of Ghislaine Maxwell? Is that really where we're at at this point? How about you take those resources and you dig deeper into the things that we already know? Don't just scratch the surface, dig deeper. But a lot of them don't want to do that. They, you know, they, What they're trying to do is just trying to piggyback on the popularity of the topic at this point. And they weren't there to, you know, blaze the way or, you know, get ready. Yeah, that's, I went, last time it was in February as well, remember when I went. It was like nine degrees when I was camped out in front of Zorro Ranch for that hour and a half. I was freezing to death. I wasn't prepared for it to be that cold, honestly. Thankfully, I had my climbing bag with me, so I had a lot of warm clothes. But I, I, I didn't expect the wind to be whipping like that. And... It was um, really, really cold in Santa Fe, for sure. I'm looking at the 24th. That's what I'm hoping is February 24th. But there's all kinds of like quarantine um, restrictions in place in New Mexico. Yeah, you know, Jen, I've heard so much about those underground tunnels. And again, like I always say, it's not what I know, it's what I can prove. I try not to put too much, uh, too much into things that I can't really verify. But 
again, I'm not discounting it and saying it's not true because we know that Epstein and the Santa Fe uh, Institute are connected at the hip. And then we also know that Los Al is about 60 miles away the other direction. And everybody knows that at Los Al, the government's been up to all kinds of funky shit for all kinds of years. And I can understand where the aliens come in at, in that conversation, considering there's a bunch of talk about underground bases for aliens in New Mexico. Not really my cup of tea. I'm not uh, the dude from Blink-182 or anything. I don't really know too much about what's real and what's not as far as aliens go. I mean, I know the guy with the goofy hair is always telling me that aliens are real and shit, but besides that, I don't really know. But I would not be shocked if there were uh, if there were a bunch of tunnels that led to all kinds of crazy places. Yeah, there's see, there certainly are a bunch of, at the very least, circumstantial type of. Uh, evidentiary ties to the occult, no doubt about it. I've been trying to catch myself up and get up to speed on the occult. And I've, you know, I've read several articles. I've been watching some documentaries. Um, I don't want to talk about things that I'm not hip on, right? I don't, you know, I'm not going to come up here and blow smoke up your asses. So I'm, I'm trying to get a little more hip on that as far as the, uh, the occult goes. And hopefully, I'll be able to add a little bit more to that in the coming weeks. Yeah, no, there's all of those occult type mazes that he had on different properties. Um, the symbolism on the, uh, the uh, temple. Um, some of the symbolism on the property itself in New Mexico, shit is weird, bro. There's zero doubt about it. It is odd. There's really no explanations for it, like logical explanations besides that. Is eating fish healthy? Certainly not for the fish and most definitely not for the oceans. That's the reason the Sarno brothers, founding chefs at Good Catch Foods, began perfecting 100% plant-based seafood. They wanted sustainable options that are respectful of all creatures and don't harm our oceans. Ask your grocer for Good Catch Foods like tuna and crab cakes or shop online at goodcatchfoods.com. Then host your own Fishless Friday and feel good about every bite. Is eating fish healthy? Certainly not for the fish, definitely not for the oceans. That's the reason the Sarno brothers, founding chefs at Good Catch Foods, began perfecting 100% plant-based seafood. Go to goodcatchfoods.com to learn more or shop online. He was into the occult. And we know that a lot of these rich people are into that kind of stuff, spirit cooking and whatnot. Abr uh, uh, Maria Ab Abr Abramovich or whatever her name is. Oh, it's just an artistic... Do -do -do. Yeah, right. That's some weird shit, okay? That is some weird, odd shit. Those people are all into it. And, you know, it's obvious that there is certainly an occult angle to this case. Yeah, no, that, that that's, I, I get it, Jen, for sure. I'm talking about like the symbolism. These guys hide things in plain sight and that's, that's their MO. I don't know about the concrete trucks, honestly. Like, I don't know what their purpose could have been for. Like, maybe to fill in those tunnels so that they couldn't be uh, spotted with like a Liger radar. I don't. I don't know, man. That's it's a good question, Rob. I don't. I don't know. It's, it's, there's a lot of things that this guy was doing, especially towards the end of his life, that I really still to this day, after all these hours of researching this case and talking about it, I still don't know. Uh, these, you know, I, I'll tell you, Jen, these people are into some weird shit. And I don't believe that Maria Abramovich and those sessions are all for artistic purposes. I, just, I don't believe it. Now, I don't think people are drinking blood and adrenochromes or whatever the hell these weirdos are talking about. But 
these so-called elite operate on a different playing field than us and they have a whole different outlook on life than we do and they're into some weird shit i'll tell you that much right now all you have to do is go take a look at the wikileaks dumps and read the emails to tony podesta himself from these people but i'm sure they weren't sending those for fun that's this is the kind of shit that these people do and as far as the occult angle for the the, the case itself um, I don't believe that it was a, a uh, uh, the, the, the motivating factor, right? But I believe that these people have those kind of wacky beliefs for sure. Yeah, it's, exactly, Jen. I just believe it's up for debate, right? I don't know one way or the other. I, I mean... You know me, I don't get too far out in the weeds with all of that conspiracy stuff, but I just, I know for a fact that these so-called elites and these people that we're talking about, especially with Epstein, they're into weird shit. And to us, we look at it and we're like, ah, that sounds a little, a little weird, right? Oh, that can't be real. But how many times have we looked at shit in this case and we started off thinking, oh, that can't be real, can it? And then by the end of looking at it and looking at all of the evidence, we're like, holy shit, that was the truth. <laughs> Oh yeah, he definitely needs the, he needed an interior decorator for sure. The inside of his house looked like trash. Yo, that that Rena O chick is crazy, huh? I saw some like um someone uh, uh showed me some of her posts. I was like, "Holy cow, this lady's insane." Like there's some like really unhinged people involved in this case. Oh, 100%, Tarnia. Like, and you, you guys know me. I don't really dig too deep on that kind of stuff. Like as far as social media goes, I don't really even care for social media for the most part. But the things that I've seen that this lady writes and shit, holy cow. I mean, does she really think that that's like a good strategy moving forward? Like that's going to help her case out or help her out moving forward because it's not going to. You talking about uh, Maria, Anna? Yeah, her art is really incredible. Maria is a very talented woman and a very nice person who's just been through so much. That means you're over the target, Jen, right? If, the, if she's silencing you already, you're just, that means you're over the target. And she's definitely, uh, she, def she doesn't want to deal with that smoke. Oh, Rena's art. Yeah, I have, like, like I said, I don't really follow her. I don't really know too much about her art or anything like that. I try not to get too caught up in following these people on social media because they all seem to be really, really, really weird. And Lord knows there's enough weirdness in my life as it is. Yep, certainly I'm going to the mountains tomorrow. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like... It's like a 45 minute from a 45 minute drive from my house to get to where uh, I go hiking usually. You know, Chad, I'll tell you what. You know who's really good at that with the pictures and stuff? Lisa and Jen are like the queens of digging that stuff up. I rely on them when they do their their deep searches. <laughs> I know, Rob. I go to the mountains. I come home, and there's a, a vandal invasion of the Capitol building. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, good old Rachel Chandler. I remember when news was first breaking about her. 
people were trying to act like she wasn't involved with MC2 when it was verifiable that she was. So that right away, when people were trying to throw all kinds of uh, disinformation out there about Rachel Chandler, I knew that there was more there, right? So I've, I've done a, a couple of digs into Rachel Chandler, and you're right, I should add that some of that research to the show. I think that will definitely do that as well. Um, she's smarmy as hell, that lady, dude. Another one of these so-called photographers. The cast of characters on this stage, this Epstein stage, is just... Can you imagine what the movie would be, would be like if you had an unlimited budget to cast whoever you wanted in the Epstein movie? Can you imagine what sort of craziness you could make? <laughs> Jen, that's funny. Gotta, sorry, you got to stay home for this trip. I'm going to Vegas. We're going the the the, the post pandemic Vegas trip. Me, Lisa, we're going to rage. You're not welcome. I'm sorry. You can't see the hiking pictures until I come home. Yeah, I try to catch as many sunrises out there as possible. Ooh, that's a good question, Lisa. I don't know. There's we have a bevy of people. You know what? Maybe we should do an next next Sunday during the live stream. Why don't we think for this week who we could have play parts in an Epstein movie? And then when we get back next week, we'll have a we we'll have some time to think about it and we could talk about it a little bit who we would cast. Who would we cast as Epstein, uh Vickers, the whole we'll, we'll do the whole gamut and figure it out. Jamie Lee Curtis, that could be a good one. Or Sigourney Weaver. Ooh, Angelina Jolie, that would be solid. That would be real good. She's She has chops. Angelina Jolie can act. That would be a, definitely a good choice. And then for Jeffrey Epstein, oh, that would be a tough one. Tyrion for Epstein. That's great. Come on, why are you doing Peter Dinklage like that? You're doing my boy Peter Dinklage hella dirty making him play Epstein. How about we have, uh, what's his name, the dude who played Ramsey Bolton play Epstein. I think that would be more fitting. At least we know he could play the role. Prince Andrew, God, Joe Exotic would be the perfect guy. Let's get him bailed out of jail. Joe Exotic can play Prince Andrew on the big screen, and it won't be too much of a uh, leap. We can petition Donald Trump to uh, pardon Joe Exotic just for the sole purpose of having him play Andrew. It'll be perfect. He could uh, write the pardon out, and we'll get Joe Exotic right into over to England, and we'll get going. How about Heather Graham as Sarah Kellen Vickers? You know, any dogs that are jumping or climbing walls that are coming to bite me are terrifying. Anything that can eat me, let's be very clear. There's not many things that your boy is terrified of. Being eaten alive by any sort of creature, that is on the list. Uh, Tom Hanks is Epstein. He'd probably be able to pull it off, honestly. Tom Hanks is a great actor. Dude has some serious chops.
<laughs> Mike Myers can play Brian Vickers. That's hilarious. I love it. Mr. Bean. What about, you could get Borat to play one of these roles for sure. But what about Indyke? Borat for Indyke. Uh, Sasha Cohen Byrne. Bo, Bo, whatever his name is for Indyke. Oh, that would be a good one. Elizabeth Hurley. Elizabeth Hurley for Ghislaine. That's a good one. How about, what's her name? Charlie Sheen's ex, ex chick who was on uh, Housewives. Ah, oh, what's her name? I can't even think of her name right now. She was in space, uh, Starship Troopers. Oh my gosh. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Denise Richards, that's her name. That chick is crazy. I can't even lie, though. I had a big-time crush on Denise Richards when that movie came out. Starship Troopers, I was like 19 years old. I, was, I thought she was so beautiful. Yeah, she's... I wonder if she would yell, Bravo, 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 Lisa, when things got too hot for her. Isn't that the uh, the code to, to make it all stop? To make the pain all go away? Bravo, Bravo, Bravo. John, John, what's up, bro? How's it going, my guy? Great, great to see you. Denise Richards, yeah, she's she's crazy. She is one crazy ass woman, that lady. Her whole entire relationship being blown up on TV like that can't be good for her. Oh, Donald Sutherland, that's a good one. That is definitely a good one. Hey, thanks, John. John, I'll be in in July, man. I'm coming in for the whole trial, so obviously we're going to have to catch up. Woo, an eight ball deep, Chad. Forget it. Can you imagine the coke speak that's going on if she was an eight ball deep? And I, I don't even know. An eight ball, I don't think that's enough. She's definitely the kind... You're, you got to have like a... You're looking at, at the very least, a quarter hanging out with her, bro. If you show up with an eight ball, there's going to be a problem. She's going to be on the phone trying to hook more up, you know, in, in an hour. Why don't we just use the Crypt Keeper as Alan Dershowitz? Get them all dressed back up from, like, the, the show and get them in costume and have him play uh, I, Mr. I Kept My Underpants On, the most fitting of fitting roles for someone. I mean, is there a bigger douchebag in the history of the world than Alan Dershowitz? The guy is an absolute piece of work. Anytime there's some sort of like sewage smelling case, you can be sure that Alan Dershowitz will be bringing up the rear. Oh yeah, you know, he's doing his his unhinged innocence tour, Anna, for sure. Interjecting about constitutional matters like anybody cares what he has to say. Dude, if you were any more irrelevant at this point, you'd be Elwin Wood, okay? Enough, uh, enough is enough already with these idiot lawyers running around with their big, fat, stupid mouths. And then somehow these assholes all end up in Washington, D.C., Maybe we can get Ted Cruz to play Acosta, Lisa. Kind of look a bit similar, huh? Ted Cruz can make his acting debut. Yeah, but Dershowitz, this dude's just, he's, he's too much. I can't, I can't deal with this guy. Like, anyone who thinks that that guy is, is innocent is having way too much DMT and elk jerky with Joe Rogan. Oh, I know, right? You would think, right, in this Me Too era that Dershowitz would have been canceled a long time ago. 
but this dude, like a case of the herpes, is impossible to get rid of. He's the anti-gift that keeps on giving. There's no cream, there's no Valtrex, there's nothing to help get rid of this herpes of a human being. Or we all just are subjected to his nonsense. Oh, no, Lisa, you know what? I've never really dug into the, the dirt of that divorce, but I'm sure that they're explosive as hell. I can only imagine what sort of nonsense is inside of those divorce papers. Imagine being like a famous person like that and having your whole life put on blast. Like you get divorced, everybody's like reading through the papers and shit. It's, that shit's wild to me. Ooh, a hemorrhoid's a good one too. Yeah, you know what, Rob? I think that with, with that Epstein situation with Rogan, I don't think Rogan's as hip to this Epstein situation as he should be. I think that there should be... I don't know. He needs to have more content about the Epstein situation on his program for sure. I find that I find a lot of the content on Epstein's program really informative, though. Uh, on Joe Rogan's uh, program, really informative. Um, a lot of the guests are people I never would have exposure to. You know, I would I would never look out look up some of these people. So I look at it as the exposure I get to some of the guests is just. It's unsurpassed, and I'm always trying to learn new things and educate myself and work my brain out, and he certainly has that kind of program. Um, another person I really, really, really enjoy listening to is Michael Malice. I like Lex Friedman a lot as well. Yeah, counting his money, Lisa, that's how, like the rest of them. You know, when you have that kind of money and you're rich and you're, you know, part of that, that crowd, it, it makes it a lot easier for you to just say, ah, you know what? That's how everyone acts. Everyone's getting abused because in the circle you roll in, that, that's the case. So that's how these guys justify it, you know, because everyone else around them is doing it. So it's okay if we do it too. And those of us on the outside looking in, we know that that's wrong and we know that these people are sick and gross. And people like Adam Lang should be embarrassed of themselves. But they have no shame. How can you how can you have shame when your moral compass is broken? And all of these people are suffering from a level of narcissism to one degree or the other. And I'd say a good portion of them are also sociopaths. That's the only explanation that, that can be given for their behavior and for the people they're hanging around with. And, you know, it gets to a point where you can only blame circumstance for so long, right? You know, like I talk about, all, like I say all the time, how long are you going to go to the barber shop without getting a cut? And that's what we find here. The, the, the fellow traveler excuse just doesn't cut it for me. These people are... They know the deal. They knew the deal. And so I'm like, Adam Lang, if he thinks that he is going to fool anyone by acting like he didn't know what was up, then he's in for a long road. Because people like Virginia aren't going to let him off the hook. You know, she's she's invested in this. She wants, she wants justice at this point. And... I say more power to her. I say more power to her. I say that she should pursue this to the very ends of the earth if that's what she decides to do. After what she's been through, who would who I don't know what kind of person would look at the situation and say, "Oh yeah. Well, these are the people that allegedly were abused by Epstein, but I think it's a good idea for us to talk shit to them on Twitter." Well, I don't understand. Like, even if you don't believe them or you don't agree with them or why don't you just keep it moving? Some people just can't help themselves. Some people just have to have some sort of pedantic response just to have one. For instance, the communist broad that was that chased uh, Maria off of Twitter the other day. No need for her comment. She, she, she could have just kept scrolling right on by. But no, 
she has to interject herself and try and impose her intelligent superiority on somebody. Meanwhile, you come off as an absolute idiot. And that's just, you know, that's how these people are. Like, people will say whatever to farm some likes. Quite possible, Jim. Look, again, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, right? We don't know who's cooperating. The government certainly hasn't uh, talked about that at all. And we haven't heard anything as far as proper agreements to provide evidence for that to occur. So you're right, we don't know. But it's certainly something that needs to be speculated about. You would think that somebody like Adam Lang with so much to lose who is not accused of actually being part of the enterprise or the abuse would be gushing information to the authorities to try and ease the blow on himself, right? You don't want to be an accessory to this shit. You don't want to be charged as an accessory or them tell you you're an accessory. So yeah, I would think that he is cooperating and I would think that most people that are on the fringes of this would be begging to speak to the investigators at this point. Because you don't want to be caught up as one of the people in the enterprise. When, you know, when the hot potato goes around, do you want to be the one holding that potato at the end? No way. No effing way. So that's why I think we're going to see all of these people start turning, ratting, jumping ship. And it all depends on Rico. Once the RICO charges are, are put into play, then it becomes a whole new ball game. Because they, they don't have the protections then. They have those, those charges and they're much heavier. They carry much more weight. And the, the sentences are mandatory and longer. So once we see that, then I think it's going to be a um, an avalanche of activity the second we see the superseded indictment. Oh, for sure, Visosky Vis knew one hundred percent. You don't get a pro. You don't get forty acres on Epstein Zorro Ranch if you aren't the key component. You're flying all them girls around on the plane. You don't know what's going on. Yeah, okay, sure, right. And I don't live in the middle of the desert. All of these pilots especially should be brought in and subpoenaed and investigated. And, and that's what we're going to keep, you know, we're going to keep harping on that. We're going to keep pushing that, that narrative forward because this needs to be a real investigation, right? It definitely needs to be a real investigation. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered, Anna. And until these people start providing answers, then the questions are going to come hot and heavy. And a lot of times the questions aren't going to be questions that they're comfortable with. But, hey, guess what? If the, um, if the legacy media doesn't want to ask the questions, then I certainly will, and I know Jen and Lisa will as well. Because if not us, then who, right? Yeah, exactly. They think we're stupid. They think we're stupid. They think the population's stupid. They think the public's stupid. And they think they're going to get by with all of their bullshit. Well, I'm here to tell them that they're not. And every single, every single one of these stories that gets buried is just another black eye to the legacy media. Yeah, for sure, Jen. I want them under oath, though. I want them part of the investigation when the RICO comes out. I want them both to be named in RICO for receiving ill-gotten gains. And once you, once you have received those ill-gotten gains from a criminal enterprise, it opens up a whole new world for the investigators to dig deeper. So I really hope that that happens. 
Yeah, we're about to wrap it up anyway, Lisa. We've already been here now. Hell, 124 minutes, folks. Another two-hour marathon. You folks are the best. Feels like a minute when I'm hanging out with you guys. I can't tell you how much I look forward to these Sundays now. You know, as a New York Jets fan in football, obviously, I have nothing to look forward to as far as the game goes. But when it comes to these uh, live streams, I'm really digging us getting together and chatting like this. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what, Rob. I was in a pretty good position, man, until 2017 rolled around. Once Carrie got sick, here's what here's a, 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 just a, an instance of what my 2017 was like. Carrie gets diagnosed. Five days later, I crash my very expensive Cadillac. Well, I don't crash it. Someone crashes it into me. Crashes into me. I my Cadillac gets totaled out. Then Carrie's mom has a stroke. So when all of those things happened at once, I was really ahead of the game up to that point. You know, I was uh, pretty solid as far as savings and shit. And if I still had all of that capital and all of those resources, I would be out already doing that, bro. I'd be in all of these people's faces. Thank you, Kristen, for the, the support of the podcast and for joining in with us here. It's important to me that we all engage like this, especially now. You know, I want us all to be on the same page, and I don't want you guys to misconstrue, you know, any messaging that we got. Yeah, you know, Rob, it was wild, bro. It was really a, a crazy-ass time, but metal, you know, metal builds metal, right? And I came out the other side as a stronger and a better person. Because up to that point, I was really worried about just myself and caught up in a bunch of bullshit. But I came out the other side as a better person, and that's, you know, if you're going to take anything from a shit situation like that, you know, at least it's something like that where you can use it moving forward. So, but it's, you know, the point is, if, if that never occurred and I didn't, we didn't have that bad stretch, as far as capital goes, I would have been on top of the world still and, and really able to pursue this shit. But, you know, real life gets in the way. I have real responsibilities now. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was, um, I'm at a point now where I am doing what I love as opposed to just chasing dough. So that's why I'm here with you guys doing this all the time and not out playing the market or being my old greedy self chasing the almighty dollar. But we're going to be here every Sunday and we're going to keep this train rolling and I really appreciate appreciate all of you guys coming out and joining me and chatting with me and supporting the podcast, right? And if you really want to support the podcast, the best way to do it is to share it with your friends. Get it out there because we're in a dangerous time, folks. We're in a real dangerous time. And like I said earlier, Benjamin Franklin said it the best. Either we all hang together or we're all going to hang separately. So... I hope that we can get past our differences, find what, you know, we agree on and work together to continue to hold these elites responsible for their actions. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. I will be back tomorrow morning as usual with the, uh, the morning update and we will keep it rolling next Sunday. Oh, uh, you know what, Rob? I do not have a PO box, but it's certainly something that I'm thinking about. I've had that request several times. So I will, um, I will look into it and see if I can get something set up and, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see what, what's what. One hundred percent, AJ, AJF, you know, you know what time it is, bro. You know how I was. I was caught up in the tribalism too, bro. I'm very clear about that. I'm very upfront about it, but now my eyes are wide open, bro. And it's, it's a, it's a we thing, all of us together as a populist movement of citizens, all of us who have been screwed, not left, not right, all of us. And moving forward, that's what we got to keep on doing, man. Yo, Emmanuel, what's up, my dude? You're catching us at the end here, bro. We're about to uh, finish up. I'm on a, uh, 
Shit, we're looking at 130 minutes, man. So next Sunday, we'll be back. I hope you join us. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Make sure if you're not following Jen and Lisa's podcast, you do that. And look, at the end of the day, even if you think people are batshit crazy, it doesn't hurt to be kind to them. All right? Try and be kind. Try not to be too judgy. Everybody's touchy right now. And let's try and get through this together. All right, folks. Keep it real. I'll be back tomorrow morning. And we will pick up where we left off. At Ease, we're all about calculating the best high for you. Ran out of shows to watch for the second time this week? Order an Indica pre-roll. Social distance park hang? Pair that awkward picnic with a vaporizer. See, we're like your weed guy, but 420% nerdier. So just worry about when you're going to take that edible and let us do the rest. Ease, highly calculated cannabis delivery. Get 30% off your first order with promo code NERD at ease.com. That's E-A-Z-E dot com. Rogue Nicotine On Demand, delivered direct to your door. Available in all your favorite flavors and formats. Pouches, gum, wintergreen, peppermint, and more. From your Monday morning coffee to watching hoops to dinner at the in-laws, Rogue Nicotine is there for you when you need it. Visit RogueNicotine.com today and save 10% when you place your order for sugar-free, fast-acting Rogue Nicotine. Underage sales prohibited. This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. For more information, visit RogueNicotine.com.